Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Chem 400 folks. I hope you guys had a great weekend. Uh, I had a nice one. It was awesome meeting with your parents on Thursday and all that stuff. Uh, unfortunately, I'm at a science conference today, so on today, Monday, uh, so I um, can't be in class. So we're just going to continue on with our naming of ionic compounds. Uh, and just re as a reminder, remember when we started off with ionic compounds uh, are made of an ionic bond, right? An ionic bond made between a metal, right, and a non-metal, right? So we have our, ultimately, we have a cation, right, our positive guy, and our anion, our negative guy. Okay, so classic ionic compound, NaCl, also known as sodium chloride, right? So remember, sodium is plus one, Cl is minus one in terms of the ionic forms, okay? Because it's sodium is going to transfer its one electron to chlorine, and then we need one of each to have a neutral ionic compound. Okay, so we can also form ionic compounds uh, with transition metals, okay, with transition metals. So things uh, in the middle of the periodic table there. So, but we need to have a little, uh, 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 transition metals have a, need to have a, an additional naming factor, okay? We need to use Roman numerals to help with naming, okay? Because they're going to help to identify the charge on the uh, positive metal, right? Okay. So, for example, if we look at, say, Fe. Oh, right. So we might want to just name this as, right, iron oxide, right? Well, there's also Fe2O3, right? That too, in terms of what we know right now, would also be named iron oxide, right? But that doesn't work, right? Because you can't, you got to have, we have to have separate names for each of these because otherwise, they're not, they're no different from each other if, by the name. So remember, ionic compounds are made of neutral, well, are ultimately neutral, right? There's no charge there, but they're made with ions. So in this case, you know, right, oxide is O2 minus, right? Okay. So in this case, what, in the first case here, right, what must the charge be of iron? in order for it to be a neutral compound. Well, we got one of them, right? So it's got to be F, E, 2 plus, right? 2 minus and 2 plus cross cancel each other out. We only need one of each. So in order to do that, we use Roman numerals, and we go iron to oxide, okay? So in this next case, okay, oxide is still 2 minus, right? But we got three of them. Right? That's three. So we got a total of plus six. So if we take six and we divide it by two, whoops. We take six and divide it by two. Well, the charge of iron here, if we have Fe3 plus, oh, three times two is six. Well, so it's iron three oxide. So we're going to use Roman numerals to identify the positive charge on the metal, okay? So for example, if we go, uh, uh, I don't know, titanium, titanium uh, for uh, nitride. Or I'm sorry, let's go chloride. 
titanium four chloride. Right? We know titanium must be have a charge of positive four. Chlorine chloride we know is minus one. So when we combine these guys together, it's going to be EiCl4. Okay. So we're going to use Roman numerals to identify the um, uh, charge of the metal. Okay, so there's that naming. There's also uh, ionic compounds. That uh, form with uh, ionic compounds with polyatomic ions. Polyatomic ions. So a polyatomic ion is just as it sounds. Poly means many, right? They're atomic, right? We got atoms. And it's an ion, right? So it means it's got a charge. Okay, so if you have your purple periodic table out, which you are definitely going to need, okay, uh, you'll notice on the back of the purple periodic table there, you have a ton of polyatomic ions. Back your purple periodic table, you got a ton of polyatomic ions. And we're going to use these in the same way that we do on any other ion, right? So let's say we have nitrate. NO3 minus, right? That's nitrate. Well, it's if we have a substance, sodium nitrate, well, we just put those together, right? Na plus NO3 minus, okay, well, that's just going to be NaNO3, one of each, right? All right, well, let's go with, let me just change it up slightly. We'll go magnesium nitrate. So magnesium is Mg2 plus, nitrate is NO3 minus, right? So what's the deal here with nitrate? Well, we need two nitrates for every one magnesium, right? Well, magnesium is there. And in order to, uh, we need NO3, right? We need two of those. So we have to put parentheses around it. And whenever we have more than one polyatomic ion uh, in our compound, right? Because what we're saying there is we have two nitrate ions, okay? So that's why it's in parentheses like that. And then we could combine it all together, right? And say we have something like, um, oh, I don't know, uh, chromium. three nitrate just to, so we've got all this together right chromium is going to be cr3 plus nitrate is no3 minus right we just piece them all together cr and three nitrates like that. okay so we just got to practice putting these guys together all right uh i have uh we're going to do a bunch of naming because we need to practice and I have keys uh, for you as well, okay? And I'll send those your way uh, tomorrow morning and that sort of thing. So that's it. We're just going to be doing naming. And there we go. All right. Hope you guys do great with this. And we'll see you soon.